Okay, so welcome to the uh, students and uh, people who are joining us today in this uh, second session uh, that I'm uh, giving a title that you can see on your, your slide, Networking for Success. We're going to talk about how to network using so uh, social networks and also about some of, uh, of the tips that professionals give us to, well, to, uh, to enjoy much better those social networks and to uh, make them work efficiently, okay? So the session is going to be held in English. I hope you don't mind it. Um, and as always, I want to, first of all, thank you for being here today. For the ones who are not able to join us today, and uh, perhaps are going to see the recording later on, uh, again, uh, I will give you my my email address so that if you, if you have any questions or something like that, you can uh, you can address to uh, me later on. And well, thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, it's a Friday morning. It's a beautiful Friday morning, and, and I'm I'm feeling really grateful that you're joining me <laughs> instead of being, I don't know, doing something uh, in your garden or in your, your garden. Um, so as, as I always do, I'll try to set some rules to participate. And as always, I advise you to use a collaborate chat that you can see uh, at the bottom of the, uh, of the screen uh, so that you can leave some of your questions. Uh, and in case you want to add uh, something like it's more complex or longer, please raise your hand by using the icon you have so that I know that, that you, can, you can add something and that you're going to open your microphone. Because sometimes the, yeah, the, the sound is not very clear if too many microphones are opened at the same time. Uh, and as always, I uh, will try this to be kind of interactive, so I will ask you to write some keywords, some phrases, and even if we're just uh, at this point, the three of us, uh, I will ask you uh, to collaborate, not in the virtual classrooms because it's not worth, but perhaps uh, by means of uh, yeah, opening your microphone and, and saying some, some ideas, okay? And uh, I'll try to keep some minutes at the end of the session to to answer your questions in case you have more. And again, uh, here you have my, my email address uh, to send uh, any questions, observations, requests, uh, pieces of advice that you want to have from me. OK, so um, well, the different and Sara were here uh, just today, but since perhaps our, our audience in the future is different, I would like you to open your microphones for a second and tell the rest of the audience who you are uh, so that you know uh, your profiles a little bit. Please. Please do so. <laughs> uh, um, you want us to tell, say? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just because probably if we interact uh, and uh, some people see the recording session, perhaps they want to know uh, what you're interested in to understand the kind of questions you do. So please introduce yourselves. Um, my name is Beatriz, and I just finished Segundo de Diploma, Segundo Aldi. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm Sarah, and I've also finished a Second DP. Okay, great. And you're studying at Tech School or at other international schools? Tech? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, both of you. Okay, thank you. So thank you for being here. Just you know me because just uh, you were with me too. But just uh, to introduce myself, I have been a teacher, a professor. Sorry, a professor at Universidad de Cambridge for 50 years now. And uh, well, I've been um, uh, teaching Spanish uh, language and literature for many years in in two different schools, private schools in Madrid. And um, yeah, I've been uh, the quality management director in one of them, and the, the pedagogical director in the second one. And you can find a little bit of me and my profile uh, in this web page. So uh, I invite you to join the, the discussions 
Uh, I basically I'm interested in, in uh, sharing ideas about how education is going to change society. And uh, well, uh, just if you want to know a little bit about me, please visit my site. And well, this is the class for today's session. Um, we're going to be talking about how to use social contacts for, uh, for, for, for our adult life. We're going to be talking about some your job search strategies, uh, just a uh, few of them, but ones that are important and I think that uh, can help you in the future or perhaps this summer if you're looking for some jobs during the summer. Uh, and then we're going to be focusing on uh, professional networking, okay? Um, we're going to be talking about personal uh, brand on social networks. And at the end of the session, uh, we're going to have a look at LinkedIn. That nowadays, at least for me, is the most powerful social network you can use. I mean, a uh, professional network, actually. Uh, the one with more users, the one that uh, has a more like serious profile. And uh, probably it's going to be uh, really helpful for you in the future. I don't know. Do you have a profile in LinkedIn? Beatriz and, and, and I don't Sarah? know. I don't. Yet? Okay. <laughs> so perhaps you you can uh, you can start by creating one of them uh, after these tips that I will try to offer you. Okay. And I see that Alexia is joining us. I'm very happy because Alexia was also here with us yesterday. So this is going to be like family time. <laughs> OK. Uh, thank you for joining us, Alexia, if you're listening to us now. OK, so since you're three of you, uh, let's do something similar to what we did yesterday. Uh, just to start with a question so that we can uh, interact later on. OK? So again, you know the procedure. I'm going to give you one minute to write down. Uh, how some ways you use to establish social contacts, how you meet people on the social networks, and what you use those contacts for. Okay, uh, so it's just because I want to meet people from other countries, or I use them as a pen, as pen friends to improve my English, or I uh, just I meet uh, friends of friends because I think it's interesting to. To, uh, to spread my, my network, whatever, whatever you use it, okay? Uh, so try to write a couple of ideas or three or four ideas, and then I'm gonna share you, uh, I'm gonna send you again to one of those uh, social, uh, co virtual cooperative rooms, sorry, so that you can work together, the three of you, and have like a common uh, cooperative inventory as we did yesterday, okay? Just to see how you behave in social network, right? Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes. Do you remember that yesterday? Okay, so uh, please uh, start thinking about how you use your social contacts, right? And then I'll I create the group with the three of you. Okay, girls, I'm gonna open the virtual. Um, the virtual area, and I'm gonna put you a few of you together, okay? So in 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 a minute or so, you'll see that you're together in the other in the other room, so that you can talk freely, okay? And now you have six minutes to complete your list and to talk about how you use your social networks. Hi again. Hi. <laughs> Hi. You're listening to me now. You are, you are back in the main room. Okay. So let me know. Let, let me know. Uh, let us know a little bit about uh, what you have been talking. How you use your social contacts and how what do you use those contacts for? Uh, well, um, we, we thought we that thought uh, maybe going into extracurricular extracurricular activities or societies in order to meet new people okay. uh, could be could be an, uh, one way uh, of expanding the social network and maybe going into forums on the internet and participating in online chats could be another way and a um, other way could be to register on platforms or create an account an account on social apps 
trade and H1 has a new thing. Which ones? Which social and uh, uh, virtual uh, platforms are you using? What uh, um, social networks? We use Skype. <laughs> like, but also like Instagram or Twitter are good like social platforms too. What about Instagram, Twitter? Yeah, you mentioned Twitter. It's just that you, you were talking to people at the same time and I couldn't listen properly. Are you using Twitter, Facebook? Yeah, I, I said like Instagram and Twitter. Okay, Instagram and Twitter. It's just that I couldn't listen to you properly because the, the sound was not very good. Great. Um, so, yeah, like personally and virtually, I would say. Great. Um, so as I said yesterday, uh, one thing that is very interesting because we are going to be talking about social networks, but also uh, um, related to, to to job search. Okay, this is at least what I was asked uh, to, to to talk about. So as I mentioned yesterday, have a look at the this uh, job report that I think is very interesting, in which you'll see how different skills are changing and what kind of uh, professional profiles people are, are, are looking for and uh, how these skills are changing. But this is something that we discussed in yesterday's uh, meeting, so uh, it's just uh, to give an information to the rest of the people who are not joining us today. Um, I would recommend you, uh, if you have uh, the chance, to see a very, very interesting documentary uh, that Fundación Cotec uh, rehearsed like um, three months ago or something like that, released, sorry, uh, not rehearsed, released like three months ago. That is called Mi Empleo Mi Futuro. It's in Spanish. It's divided in two different parts. But I think that you're going to be really, really interested in knowing all the data that they offer about how to uh, search for um, groups of people, uh, what kind of opportunities you will have according to the trending topics that we are seeing today. And well, um, you see, uh, I, I, I don't want to summarize it because I prefer you to have a look at it. Um, you see that uh, things are changing very fast. You, you already know that. But uh, basically what is going to be more uh, effective in job searching it's to think about all kind of things that human beings can do and not machines, okay? Because uh, most of the jobs that are kind of mechanical, repetitive, are going to be held by machines. Actually, we are on the verge of the uh, fourth industrial revolution, and basically this means that many of the tasks that are related to um, dealing with data, dealing with repetitive tasks or activities uh, are going to be held by machines. So then we have to think about things that we human beings can do uh, that are uh, related to uh, emotions, to feelings, to social contact, to everything that has to do with this that is more humanistic. Okay? So I think it's really, really interesting. Have a look at it. And if you want to uh, send your impressions to me uh, by means of an email or whatever, I will be more than happy to discuss with you because I really think that this is going to be, this is reality nowadays. nowadays. Okay, um, so I'm going to share with you, uh, because we're talking about social networking as means uh, of uh, job hunting, I'm going to share with you a very short video uh, that I think is very, uh, well, it's very illustrative of what we can do. And uh, when we want to have, uh, have to look for uh, jobs, what are going to be the most successful strategies that we can use? And you will see in the video that social networking is probably one of the highest, uh, one of the top ones. Okay? So let me share uh, again the the video with you as we did just today. Okay.
Today, you're going to discover the most successful job hunting strategies and their success rates so that you can get job offers fast. Hi, I'm Ian Jenkins, founder of JobHuntingSecrets.com. Are you struggling to find a job? What most job hunters don't realize is that often a small change in job hunting strategies can yield huge results. In today's episode, I'm going to share the most important job hunting strategies, which are based on 40 years of research by Richard Bowles, author of the book, What Color Is Your Parachute? Let's start with the most unsuccessful job hunting strategies and work our way up to the most successful ones. Are you ready? Because the results are going to surprise you. Number 10, the worst match rate goes to online job boards and employee websites. They have a match rate of between 4 and 10%. Now, most of us would experience the 4%. It's only those who have technical jobs, engineering, finance, healthcare type jobs. Those are the ones who get the 10% success rate. The other 12,700 job titles available, we experience the 4%. That's pretty miserable when you think of how much time we all spend on online job boards. Let's move on to number nine, mailing your resume to employers. That has a 7% success rate. Now, quite frankly, there's an over-reliance on resumes, which, well, it's worthy of another video, but despite its results, and job hunters continue to push it towards potential employers, and it gives you a 7% match rate. Coming in at number eight is answering local newspaper ads. Between five and 24% success rate. And the region for the big range here is the 24% belongs to the low end jobs and the 5% to high end jobs. So there's a huge range there depending on what level of role you're looking for. Number seven, search firms, five to 28%. Just like there's a pretty broad range of industries that search companies cover, so is their depth of competence. And that's one thing that Mr. Bowles noticed in his, noted in his book is that the huge range of competence also dictates their success rate. Number six, ads in professional journals. That gives you a 7% success rate. It gives you a little bit more targeting. At the same time, it's very competitive in those industries. Now, let's move to number five where we have state and federal employment offices at 14%. Still pretty good, but you better have patience because you know those applications take time. Number four, asking for job leads from friends, families, contacts, Facebook friends, you name it. Simply asking people for leads to jobs can result in a 33% success rate. Well, at least we're moving upwards, but we're still not near number one. Number three, knocking on the door of an employer. This is a 47% success rate. This one surprised me, but of course it works particularly well with small companies. Those with less than 25, maybe max 50 employees. After that, you, can have, you might have to go through some security doors or some locks and beeps and reception in order to get into the hiring manager. And that's why it becomes less and less effective the larger the company. Number two, yellow pages and company directories. This is a hardcore, very much sales-oriented way of approaching your your sale, your excuse me, your job hunt. But this would put you in front of the companies in the industries you want by cold calling them, asking for appointments, booking meetings with them, going online, and, and specifically going after those companies on a list. That's a 65% success rate. But you've got to be pretty assertive and enjoy that kind of uh, job hunt. The number one, the number one best way to look for a job is what's known as the parachute approach, or I would like to call it face-to-face -face advice meetings. This is a simple method for asking for advice from hiring managers, which consistently gets you in the door with them and subsequently gets you access to unadvertised jobs. Now, as you can see, job hunting methods were not created equally. It helps to prioritize your time towards the most valuable approach, or else your job can go into overtime. Which method do you spend your time doing? What should you be spending your time doing? Okay, could you could you listen to it properly? Yes. Yes. Uh, Great. Yes. Okay. Even if some of the referrals were supposed to be for um, for Americans, but most of the tips 
that uh, these sky gates are really interesting for also for the Spanish reality, okay? At least on my experience. So, um, even if yesterday we were talking about how important it is to have a very good resume, a very good uh, curriculum vitae, um, uh, still, it, it is it is important. I mean, it's important to have a good uh, copy letter and, and so on. But actually, uh, yeah, um, social and job networking is more and more uh, important nowadays. Okay, so uh, looking for a job uh, becomes nowadays uh, a full-time job, okay, in the sense that you need to spend time and effort on it. Um, so uh, once you start looking for it, take time to uh, update your social profiles, take time to uh, have a look at the contacts you made on uh, on social networks such as LinkedIn and, and Twitter. Keep on tracking on your uh, uh, contacts and so on. As you can see in the video, there are like three uh, success rates that are high and are related to the idea of having this social networking. Okay, 33% uh, of success rate uh, was related to the idea of asking people uh, for leads to jobs, like introducing you to other people who could be interested in your profile. Knocking on the door of, a, of an employer uh, is the second one. In this case, it's just that the employer is um, desperate to find the right person. So uh, you have to be uh, very, um, uh, very willing to have a look at the job offers in, in professional networks, as uh, LinkedIn, for example. LinkedIn is being used more and more uh, for like job uh, offers nowadays. Uh, and then, um, yeah, going after the companies you are interested on and calling them. Okay, uh, I uh, I have said e called calling them. I'm sorry, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was my mistake. I was thinking in Spanish. Okay, and th that's a very good inter uh, that's a very good idea too. If you're interested in a particular company in the future, uh, try to find uh, the contact uh, that can introduce you in the company, and then uh, try to chase them and to, to ask for uh, an appointment. Meeting, okay, um, if you keep on track on that, we'll talk it about it later. Uh, that's a very good idea to. To be on their mind and to be uh, to be there in case an opportunity job arises, and they will take you into account, okay? Because they already know you because you established certain contacts uh, contacts before. And uh, definitely, it's worth spending time building professional networks, uh, as I was saying before, and I would recommend you uh, LinkedIn. Okay. Something also that can be interesting for you, I don't know if you know it, uh, Google has this page that is called Google Trends. Uh, are you familiar with it? Have you ever heard about it? No. Not really? Okay. Google Trends is interesting for many reasons. It gives you information about uh, keywords, uh, about topics that people are looking for. So you can use it, for example, when you think about uh, creating a personal web page and write uh, different posts. If you wanna, if you wanna say, okay, I am interested in the world of marketing, but I wanna know exactly uh, people from marketing uh, what are they interested in. Then you go and look for some pages, and then you find many different topics. But you want to know which one is the topic in which people are more interested. And you go to Google Trends, write down the keyword, and you'll find uh, how many uh, uh, social publications or how many tweet, tweets are there. Uh, and, and well, information that is very uh, useful when you need to decide among different topics to write on. Okay. Um, for example, if you have. Uh, if you want to look for a good hashtag that are very useful in, in Twitter or in LinkedIn, uh, you go to Google Trends and then imagine that you have like three possible hashtags, but you cannot decide which one is going to be better for you to have a position on social networks. Then you go to Google Trends, write the three of them or the four of them you have, and then it gives you enough uh, information to uh, make decisions about which one 
would be more useful for you to have a CEO position. Okay, have you ever heard about CEO position? No, I don't think so. No? Okay. CEO position is the, the, the let's say, the, the digital position your posts or your websites uh, has on, uh, on Google searchers. So imagine that you are creating a project uh, or you're creating a, a web page uh, and you're interested in talking about your hobbies, okay? Uh, if you work on the CEO, uh, you're going to be up in the position. So when someone asks for that topic you are going to be talking on, if you have been working on your CEO by means of using good hashtags, uh, writing about topics that people are more interested in and related to, to your hobby or whatever, the more you use trending topics, the more your CEO position would, incre would increase, increase. And when people look for this information, you're going to be on top of the searchers. Okay? So this is very interesting. This is something that companies use a lot. But this is some, also something that people use to uh, increase the influence of your personal profile. Okay? So, um, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, it, it is a whole, a huge world, uh, and uh, I could give you tons of tips, but let's focus on the most important things. Okay, and then, as you could see in the video, networking is very, very important nowadays to look for your position. So, what are the tips that it can, that it can give you to help your network uh, work better? Okay, first idea, look for referrals. Uh, it's like um, asking for people and people you know to introduce other people in companies or in in, in uh, yeah in groups you are interested to be in. Okay, so stick around with the people you already know. Uh, try to see if they know other persons that are interested for you and probably. Uh, through the referral of this person, you're going to receive a warm welcome and introduction. And then later on, you can say, okay, remember that I was introduced to you by blah, 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 and you mentioned the person, okay? Uh, LinkedIn also has an online introduction tool. So you can have a look, if you have a friend in LinkedIn, you can have a look at the person you are interested in, and you can see the net that this person has around. Uh, professional net, and you, you can ask this person to introduce you to a third one, okay? So, first idea, look for referrals, okay? References. Okay, second idea, uh, you have to account your social media, okay? Social media is an effective way to get to know important contacts. contacts. As I was saying, I would tell you, for professional means, for professional uh, aims, uh, I would recommend you to use Twitter and LinkedIn. For other kind of social uh, life, I would, I would recommend you to use Instagram or other means, okay? But Instagram nowadays is not so useful for black for professional networks. Um, so uh, a good idea is that have a look at the profiles you're interested in and try and comment in on a link they post, for example. Imagine that a Twitter that mentions something it is very interesting, try to answer back, try to add an idea, okay? Or in, uh, yeah, in LinkedIn, people share like articles from newspapers and magazines that are like professional, uh, of professional interest. Try to comment on, on these kind of things, okay? That way you can start new conversations, and then if you see that they are interested in you and they answer back, try to offer value in return. For example, the other day, uh, a very young person contacted me through LinkedIn, and I answered back, and then uh, he offered me some summaries of books on digital marketing that he had been reading, and he just uh, offered them to me for free. And that was very nice, because uh, this is offering value, okay? Like, he would give me some summaries that were interesting for me, and some books that he would recommend, and I offered back some of my posts on topics that he was interested in. 
So this is a good way to introduce to other people uh, using social media because I don't know, perhaps in the future, uh, I am looking for someone who uh, is an expert on, on marketing for my company. And I think of this person who offered me uh, something that was valuable at a certain point. Okay, so it's like creating this network that is useful in the future, not just immediately. Okay, another good tip is do not ask for a job directly. Okay, you should ask people for information that will assist you in your job search. If you're too direct, uh, well, this is not working very well. Okay, it's just a uh, uh, I'm interested in this uh, in this area. Could you help me? Could you suggest some uh, persons uh, who would need help, or could you suggest some blogs or some uh, specialized uh, publications? And that way, it doesn't sound so direct, and and you're not gonna disturb people around. You, okay, so uh, probably you may arise more interest if you are not too direct. If you just ask for assistance and not for just could you give me a job okay uh, another good idea just today we were talking about your your cv and your resume is to use it as a tool for advice you can ask people that you see that are influencers to review your resume and to give you feedback on how to improve it that's a good way for them to discover your experience, your work history, your previous certifications, and your objectives, because uh, you're not going to have many chances just to, to, to let people know about your whole profile just in a minute when you're talking to them. But if you ask them to have a look at your resume and to give you feedback, then you're going to take a couple of extra minutes that are going to be very useful for them to find new things about you, okay? Uh, so this is a, another another good idea. Could you give me some advice on how to improve my resume or how to improve my my personal profile, and then they'll, they'll give you time. But remember, and this is extremely important: do not take up too much time because for professionals who are really influencers, time is a treasure. So if you wanna ask for a meeting or if you wanna ask for a I don't know a virtual meeting, a Zoom video conference or something like that, try to offer uh, some uh, different um, to, to to plan your meeting ahead of of, of time. Okay, so say uh, uh, I would I would like to uh, have a meeting with you and to explain about my project. Please could you uh, could you say 15 minutes for me in the next couple of weeks or something like that. It is like you are establishing uh, a time in which uh, you are offering uh, for this meeting. If you see that you are not getting uh, an answer back, do not do not spend too much time because probably you are very. If a person doesn't ask, answer you back in the first uh, in the first moment or in well. Do not be too insistent. It, it is not going to be a very good idea. Okay, so better you look for another contact. You have tons of people that you can uh, that you can reach uh, by means of uh, social networking or, or LinkedIn. Uh, but in, if you are too insistent, this is not going to be a very good idea. Okay. Uh, other advice: if you ask for uh, for for advice, or if you want to have this meeting to gather information about a company or about a project, please be a good listener. Okay? So if you have asked another people for advice, make sure that they have the opportunity to tell you. So uh, if you just talk nonstop, the other person you're asking for advice may you feel that you are uninterested and uh, they are not going to be very willing to introduce you to a third person who perhaps can help you. Okay? So you can have like a set of questions just to 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 give the impression that you are a very good listener and to talk about uh, this uh, company or job experience or or kind of training that is needed for the job position you're looking for. Okay. Uh, also, it's interesting to have a question about the culture of the company uh, because every every company works in different ways, and so perhaps you are not that interested in working for a company. That is very hierarchical, or that is very old-fashioned, 
uh, and you're looking for something that is like more like net culture in which people delegate and people are willing to work on a more democratic way in which people are asked for ideas and sharing uh, projects and so on okay i would recommend you to look for companies that are working that way you, this is called cultura de red okay net culture and there are companies in which uh, people have a feeling of uh, presence and have a feeling of uh, implication because uh, they are asked for ideas, they are asking to share their skills, and you feel that you're valid and that you are uh, that your voice is important in that company. So I would advise you to look for uh, uh, companies that have this kind of culture. Okay, uh, if you find the person. Uh, the, the right person and you have been introduced to that person uh, try to present a success story try to think about uh, what kind of solutions this company or this person is looking for and try to uh, tell them uh, that uh, you had a similar previous experience so uh, people want a happy ending so try to present a solution by telling a story about how you help other people in a similar situation okay so imagine that you are uh, you are an expert on marketing, and then uh, you are interested in working for this company because for a next company because you see that they are not very good in in, in uh, with marketing uh, tips or with marketing uh, or with social media. Try to tell them, okay, I was working for this other project and they had. Uh, this situation that is similar to the one that you're telling me, the problem that you have, and this was the way I helped them to to improve. Uh, okay, and include lots of information on how these such things were before it came it came to a happy ending. So, oh, they had this horrible situation, and I helped them in, in this or that way. Okay, this helps with job hunting, with volunteering, and with other other kinds of projects, uh, even if it's only like. Uh, school projects or or these kind of clubs you're joining in your school. Okay. Uh, you can also ask for suggestions on how to expand your network. Uh, and well, think that every time that you contact an interesting person, this new person will know approximately another 200 people that could be interesting for you. So uh, if you are asked to be introduced. To some other extra people, you are going to increase very easily your network and your chances to find good opportunities. Once you uh, are introduced to a person that is interested uh, in, in social networks, in LinkedIn or in Twitter, try to create reasons to keep your relation go uh, going. For example, sending information that you find is going to be interesting, posting comments on their, on their uh, articles, on their LinkedIn postings. Uh, and try to find at least two or three opportunities a year to reconnect. Like, I don't know, sending some information that you think is going to be valuable, uh, sharing knowledge, sharing uh, tips and books uh, on the topics you have in, in common. Or, well, the idea is that you, uh, once you find these influencers that are going to be important for you, Try to keep track of the correspondence, on the ideas, on the on the kind of things you were talking in the past, so that when you establish future correspondence, you can have this personalized touch that is so important that I said just today. Okay, uh, when I advised you to, to write a, a a cover letter. Okay, and. Um, Yesterday I mentioned something that is also very important. When I talked about uh, personal information uh, at the end of my session, I was talking about online presence and reputation. Nowadays it is very important, more and more important. So even if in the past you had like a, a wild life <laughs> profile, uh, try to clean it so that uh, to avoid content that can be problematic in the future, okay? Uh, do not uh, mean yourself in matters such as religion, politics, and so on, because these are topics that are not very politically correct, okay? So try to avoid those and to have a very clean 
online reputation. Nowadays, it's very important. People are talking about netiquette. I don't know if you've ever heard about this, netiquette. Uh, I'm writing it. Have you ever heard about an etiqueta? No, no. Not really? Okay. It's like tips on how you have to behave on social media, okay? If you are posting things that are, uh, that are going to be very controversial, this can create problems in the future. So try to avoid those. Or choose one social media, like for private uh, communication with friends that are like very very alike in in your in the way you think or very alike in the way you believe about politics or religion or other things that can be kind of controversial you keep uh, for for example imagine uh, i'm going to give you my my case i keep facebook for like very private and, and precise uh, links okay because in facebook i have like more personal information i post uh, uh, pictures about my private life, I talk about my family, I talk about my beliefs, uh, but I keep Facebook only for friends, okay, for people who I know are not going to be dangerous in the future, let's say. While I keep my Twitter and LinkedIn profile in a very in much more professional uh, tone, okay, so I never post things on my my Twitter profile that is Eva Educando if you wanna have a look at it. Uh, I try to talk about um, I'm gonna write it down. Just in case you wanna follow me. I try to post things that are related to my professional interests. Uh, I try not to opinionate very much. If I give a very strong opinion it's about something that I think is very important about professionals. Okay, for example these days uh, we have been discussing in Twitter on how to plan for next year's uh, back to school because with the COVID and the, the pandemic situation that we have, we as professionals need to give ideas that are powerful and clear for other professionals who are not so uh, convinced about, I don't know, uh, models of uh, incorporating uh, to classes and things like that. But I try not to be very controversial on other topics. For example, imagine that people are discussing about uh, how politicized the new uh, educational law is going to be. You know, long law. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a new educational law. Okay, because I know that, yeah, uh, long law is kind of politicized nowadays. I try not to be very controversial if I am talking in professional networks. Okay? Because uh, you have to be safe when you're in a professional network. On the contrary, on Facebook, if some of my friends ask me for my opinion and I have, a, a, and I have enough confidence, I'm going I'm to be much more clear. You know what I mean? So try to decide which social networks you use for professional means or for just uh, meeting new people, who can be uh, funny and who you increase your uh, your your friends, okay? But try to choose, okay? And try to very be very careful about the tone you choose for one or the other, okay? Uh, on social networks, this is a very interesting study that IAP Spain uh, posts every single year, and it has uh, it has to do with the uh, how, how much people know and use sh uh, social uh, social networks. This last year, uh, this is the this is the study uh, made in, in 2019. The network that was growing very fast was Instagram. Okay, and the second one, uh, this is like global use. Okay, the second one keeps on being uh, Facebook. Okay, but if you read the report you'll see that Instagram and Facebook are more informal. And then, then the, the other ones that are more professional are Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn, okay? As you can see, are the next ones. WhatsApp is growing very fast. But for example, WhatsApp is not very used in uh, the United States, okay? So depending on the country you are in, it is interesting to have a look at this, uh, all this information, to know which one is going to be more useful for you and for what means. 
And then, uh, I don't have much time, but uh, I'm, I'm going to recommend you two posts uh, that are written in Spanish. Uh, this is uh, uh, on how to improve your personal brand on social networks. Okay, Personal brand is about what you talk, uh, what you uh, present on your life and on your interests. Okay, so personal branding is extremely important nowadays because it's like what people see about yourself. Okay, and uh, you have this post that is very interesting, uh, marca personal and redes sociales. But some of the tips uh, is that uh, try to keep uh, a very coherent image on all social networks, even if you choose that Facebook is going to be for your friends and LinkedIn and Twitter is going to be for professionals, but try to use more or less the same image. Like, you, do, you don't want to be too wild on Facebook and then too serious on LinkedIn, okay? So try to be coherent. Uh, yeah, the, the post recommends you to evolve towards a more serious profile. That is something that I mentioned before. Uh, make sure that your social profile offers consistent directions and information. For example, uh, if you have a personal site, as is my case, try to offer all this information on all your social uh, networks, okay? Like at the end, when people look for Eva Teva, who is Eva Teva? Uh, all, the, all my social networks are, are going to address to the same web page, okay? And then uh, join the right groups in which to learn, show your knowledge, and expand your brand image. For example, in LinkedIn, you're going to have grupos, those grupos in LinkedIn. They are going to be very useful. If you're interested in whatever, photography, or uh, cinema, or education, or whatever, look for the groups first, then have a look at how many members they have. If you're interested in something very local, Imagine that you're only interested in groups in Spain because you know that you're not going to have time to share with people around the world. Okay, uh, try to uh, set time for those ones, not for all of them, because there are some groups that are very international. And at some point, perhaps it's not going to be very useful to have information on Ecuador's photography. So it depends on your interests. Okay, if you're more interested in like in locals or in like more international uh, groups. Uh, then in Twitter, uh, a good advice is to create a list of people that you follow, okay, and then organize them uh, uh, depending on the topics. You can have like lists on uh, hobbies, lists on professional interest, links on, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, universities, now that you're going to be looking for universities. By the way, are you going to study in Spain or in international universities? Um, me and like in the UK. In the UK, great. Um, I don't know yet, but probably in Spain. You are deciding nowadays. <laughs> you are yeah, applying. I don't know. Um, I don't know yet. Either. Okay, you don't know yet. You're probably you're applying. Okay, so depending on the kind of university you're gonna be applying to. Probably uh, you can also choose to, to be part of, of different professional uh, groups in LinkedIn or Twitter, okay? Uh, as I was saying yesterday too, when I was advising about uh, pages that you can look using Google, uh, a more uh, precise uh, search, uh, yeah, uh, time will tell you, okay? Then if you have a blog or a personal site, Mark an editorial calendar for your publications. If you want to be present and talking about the topics you're interested in, uh, you cannot leave a blog or your networks for months and disappear, okay? Because people are not going to take you seriously. For example, I try to post one or two powerful posts in my blog every month, okay? Sometimes, if I don't have enough time, I post a video. But I try to keep on tracking, okay? So that people can see that I am active. And then, it is a very good idea to study the influencers on the topics you are interested in and relate and collaborate with them by uh, sending them information, by naming them in, in Twitter or in LinkedIn. And uh, would you give me five more minutes? Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Can I take five more minutes? Yes. Okay, okay. About LinkedIn, uh, that is like my last uh, thing. 
LinkedIn was founded in, in, in 2002, and nowadays it has uh, almost 600 million registered users. So uh, by uh, 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 it is the leading social network for business and users who want to create and consolidate professional identities on the internet. So if you are interested in like job searching or uh, uh, volunteering or something that is like more professional, go for LinkedIn. Okay, uh, LinkedIn allows you many things. Uh, I'm gonna give you some uh, some data that they no data sorry some data on link, uh, LinkedIn users. Uh, after the US, the three countries that have more LinkedIn users are India, Brazil, and the UK. Okay, so uh, I, I don't know, Beatriz, I, I think mentioned that it's going to study in the UK. LinkedIn is very powerful in the UK, so probably it is a good idea to start your professional profile. 13% uh, of LinkedIn users nowadays are millennials, uh, your generation. Okay. 13% and this uh, percentage is growing. Okay, so uh, it is, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, five years ago it was, uh, it was a social network that was used mainly, mainly by senior professional levels, but nowadays millennials are growing in LinkedIn. Okay, there are uh, almost 90 million millennials on LinkedIn, and out of them, 11 million hold decision-making positions. So it's very interesting that you look for influencers there, okay? Because if you reach to contact them, you're going to be in very good positions when looking for opportunities, okay? So start now. <laughs> if you're interested in certain topics, so start now, okay? Follow them, uh, add some comments on their posts, and uh, if you start now, probably in four or five years, you're going to have a very nice life. Okay, I have been working on my senior uh, on my LinkedIn profile for uh, at least five years now. Okay, and then uh, LinkedIn profiles have different categories. The last one is uh, Categoría Estelar, it's called in Spanish. And in order to reach that, you need to work. Okay, you need to, to have a uh, lot of experiences, lots of contacts, but it takes time, but it's worth it. Uh, LinkedIn is increasing, and it's increasing brutally in Spain and Latin America, okay? Uh, it started uh, growing in uh, 2016, so three, four years ago. But nowadays it's growing really, really fast in Spain and Latin America. Just to give you an example, uh, I created a new profile for my company, for Educando, like uh, four months ago, only four months ago. Uh, and nowadays we have more than 4,000 followers, only in four months, okay? So, yeah, it is, it is really powerful. Uh, so here are some of the advantages, but we have uh, mentioned them. Uh, it is a very nice way to expand your network of contacts. Uh, it gives you recognition on your personal brand. Uh, you can use the groups, the group or the LinkedIn. They are very interesting, look for them. Uh, and you can, uh, the, the ones that are like private are the ones that are really good for showing about your uh, your ideas, your projects, your volunteering uh, activities and so on. And uh, you can uh, constantly update your information, okay? Uh, just uh, to, to, to use LinkedIn to be more visible, first of all you need to define your your keywords okay the keywords that are going to be spread on your profile take good care of your business card la tarjeta de presentación that is the that is like the first part in which you include uh videos and you include uh, about experience you had and, and so on and then uh, you can use also uh, a profile and cover photo for example in my case uh, my cover photo is the one that corresponds to the uh, slogan in, uh, in Educando, that is, El Camino para una Educación Constantina. So this is very important because it's like the first image that people uh, are going to see, okay? And then you can ask, uh, well, you can also use these keywords to, for the CEO position that we were talking about before. And then you can ask people to recommend your skills. You can add up to 50 skills and you can highlight three of them so you can ask your contacts 
to uh, say that you are very good in images, uh, feature design, or in photography, or in languages, or whatever. And there are many of them. And you can ask people to say that you are good in that. So that uh, if, if you go and look for an estelar profile, un, 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 un perfil estelar, de estos que decía, you see that, okay, this, this person is very good at these three main ideas. So choose wisely. Choose the three big ideas that you want to show about yourself, okay, when you start building this, uh, this network. And uh, there is another post uh, that I would like to recommend you. It's in Spanish too, and it's from uh, Aula CM. Aula CM is a, it's a company that helps uh, people to increase their personal branding and social media. And you have a very beautiful uh, post in which many of these ideas that we have been discussing are kind of more developed. And uh, you can find very good tips. Uh, and, and really, I would recommend you to, to start doing right now your profile, OK? To start looking for contacts. Um, that was all for today. Uh, so thank you for being here with me. Uh, if you have any questions now that we are uh, out of the time, that we had. Uh, I don't know if you have a question now. If not, I invite you, as always, to send me an email and to have a look at the LinkedIn profile, too, so that you have an idea. By the way, millennials are using nowadays uh, audiovisual information. If you have good videos about your projects and things like that, use them in your social media. I have included, for example, uh, I don't know, some presentations of congresses I attended to, or things like that. This, this can be very useful.